largest growth category of the next 20 years where you could establish what will be the largest brands on earth and help the most number of people have a healthier, happier life. And by the way, what I'm describing is cannabis. Um, Welcome back to Cannabis Matters. We're here today with Corey Rothschild. He is the SVP of Marketing, Retail, and Wholesale Brands at Cresco Labs. Corey, thanks so much for carving out the time to be with us today. Absolutely, it's great to great to see you again um, and to be with you. So I guess to kick things off, I'm really curious. You came from mainstream, the world of mainstream CPG. Mm -hmm. where, where were you and what drew you into, in, into cannabis? What was the, what did that journey look like? Yeah, so before I was in cannabis, so for context, I've been in cannabis for almost four years, um, which feels like more than a decade if you think about how much change has happened. Um, before this, I was at Gatorade. So I was leading um, consumer engagement of Gatorade across all of our content, our media, our experiential, um, and really had had a background in traditional brand management um, and really working in consumer industries my entire career. And as far as like what drew me to cannabis, it was really the bigness of what it's going to do in terms of like a consumer product to the world over the next 20 to 30 years. So like if you think about the number of occasions that cannabis meets in people's lives, right? It is an alternative to migraine medication. It is used for pain management um, in very severe cases. It also like from a wellness perspective helps people sleep, helps with anxiety. It is a calorie free, hangover free alternative to White Claw and it is everything in between. And so when you think of just about the number of places that cannabis can exist in people's lives, it is so much more vast um, than any other category that exists today on earth. And so I just think from my standpoint, you multiply those two together and, and you're talking about the single greatest driver of consumer package innovation that we will have seen in a really long time. And it already is driving more incremental growth than the largest companies that we're all we all know by name. And so, you know, that means it will be normal. It means that it will be some of the largest brands on earth. And it means that we need brands because it's tremendous amount of education is required. Um, and to a certain extent, perception change for people who, who have a legacy perception of the plant. And so, you know, if I said to you, what category do you want to be in? That's the largest growth category of the next 20 years where you could establish what will be the largest brands on earth and help the most number of people have a healthier, happier life. And by the way, what I'm describing is cannabis. Um, I think it was sort of like a type of thing that I couldn't not do. This really is an opportunity of a lifetime of lifetimes. And I, I, yeah. I feel equally blessed to, to be here and be part of it. How is cannabis embracing and how is Cresco embracing traditional CBG models from from other verticals. So what are you seeing that's, that's similar? How is that coming to life? And is there anything that's sure. different that's just net new that, uh, that you marvel at? For those who aren't as familiar with cannabis, we have to grow our own commodity, make that into a product, distribute that product ourselves, and in some cases, sell it in our own retail. So the level of difficulty of, you know, if you told me at Gatorade, we have to grow our own sugar before we make, you know, a, a and, and I hope that sugar crop works out for you because it's a really important input to making, you know, Gatorade. That then we have the distribution challenge of moving around, you know, the country or, or, or the state. I would say, well, that's insane, but that's the world we live in. And I think the level of complexity and sophistication that's required to run our business um, uh, stable, you know, in a stable way is, is really hard. Even when you think about, you know, the core drivers of awareness of a brand, which for most brands is at the point of sale, it is in, through customer marketing and the relationship you have with your retail customers. It's how the brand presents itself. From, from a marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. what are today's winning cannabis brands getting right and where are you seeing them miss the mark? First and foremost, like consistency matters and is not inherently um something that's not found in cannabis the capability to create consistency in the product is a prerequisite to creating a brand that is an experience that people can expect and understand and be drawn to over and over again so i think consistency in literally the product itself but also the brand itself is super important so when i think about brands that um, are really strong i think about the ability to have a consistent point of view 
a consistent iconography and design identity that is reinforced in someone's mind over and over and over again. And it is apparent in all the channels in which that, that person, you know, interacts with that brand, whether that's on packaging or in advertising. And so in the same way that I admire consistency in brand building of Starbucks, Nike, Gatorade, the lack of change in, in those things is really important. And so not, you know, establishing that identity and living with it, especially when you're trying to teach people the, the brand in the first place is really important. Um, the second thing I would say is like actually standing for something. Um, a brand has to have a point of view and a belief system that connects with a consumer set. Um, and there's definitely brands out there that are doing that. Um, and then the last part, which is important for any brand is ubiquitous distribution is your number one driver of awareness and understanding. Running into it at the shelf, seeing it on menus, that is as much the secret sauce to driving an understanding of a brand as something like advertising or a specific, you know, a, a specific um, channel. So there are brands that are doing that well. I think where there's missteps in the world of cannabis is there's a flashiness of trying to get attention that can cause you to go sideways on any one of those, right? A constant reinventing of your brand um, is often not necessary and creates confusion in both what that brand stands for and even that that is a brand. How, how do you leverage data from an actionable insights perspective in cannabis today, maybe in ways that are similar to your your, sure. your, your, your prior life of Gatorade and maybe ways that are different? We have an incredibly data rich environment to not only understand the performance of our own brands and our competitors' brands, to understand the consumers directly and their profiles and the choices they make, not just on ours, but in conglomeration with different and how they respond to pricing and promotion and assortment. Um, and so like the data of that ecosystem, the test and learns that can come from that are, um, are so unique and um, so unique to this category to have that. So I would say like, that's the big thing if you're sitting out there wondering about the advantages of data and cannabis, like to own your own retail, which is often required in some states structurally is just, you know, there's so much that you can get from that and then extrapolate to running your business elsewhere or helping, to, helping other retailers by being a great brand to them. Teams in cannabis are really no different than teams in any other industry. However, the velocity that cannabis moves yeah. at. I mean, there's the speed of light and then there's the speed of cannabis. So yeah. walk us through how you think about the art and science of building and hiring world-class teams in such a fast moving industry. Look, you're building an industry, you're building a company. That in of itself is monumental. You're doing it with structural government and compliance considerations. So like every challenge that you can imagine you're sort of up against. So. By definition, you need someone who is a problem solver by nature um, and who's comfortable with just sort of like banging down those walls to really fight to make something that's pushing, you know, that the gravity or inertia is pushing against you. Um, and so there's a spirit of like being okay and excited about this challenge that keeps you going when you've solved a hundred and you've got another one and another one and it's Friday afternoon, like it is today. Um, you know, I think from my standpoint of our company, we're in a teenage position. We're growing like crazy. Um, and in many ways, we need a startup mentality in how we um, continue to be nimble in an, in an industry that's hard to predict and will continue to evolve. And at the same point, we have thousands of people in our company um, managing a tremendous amount of, of projects and scale and resources, like we're a giant company. So like process and structure is absolutely needed. It's necessary. It's um, scale and, and the future planning is critical. And so it really is trying to find people that are comfortable swinging between both of those in a, in a moment to moment or day to day basis. I remember in B school, one of my professors was like, all right, you're going to be in like in the middle of things and like you're going to have imperfect information and you're going to have to, sure. you're going to, have to figure it out. So of course, no, I, I'm like so thankful for my business school experience um, because it was based in the case method where you just had no, you only had the information that the protagonist had in that moment and um, and you had to make a call. And I think I live that, I live a case study five times a day. <laughs> On that, Corey, okay, so 
this is this is great. On that on that note, so let's look fast forward ten years and imagine that you and I are back in B school and we're reading a case study put out by Harvard Business Review about the cannabis space. Now, what if you think about the inflection points that you've seen to date, the major sh paradigm shifts in the industry? You know, what's the what's the juiciest business scenario you can imagine uh, professors giving students to un unpack from a case study standpoint? My honest answer is I don't know how to pick. Like, I genuinely don't know how to choose. Like, if I said, like, we integrated six, you know, uh, mergers and acquisitions last year, and how do you ingest and do that thoughtfully, you could do a business case on that. If I talked about how to build and scale a team from zero to 75 marketers in two years, that I, I we could do a, we could do a case study on that. Like, if I said, um, how do you think about demand planning in a in a sales environment that's so unknown and never been done before. How do you do supply planning when you grow your own inputs? Like it is it is truly the hardest and most exciting of all of these challenges, which you either have the personality that that is the flame that never ignites even when you're tired or never goes out, even if you know you're tired at the end of the week, or that sounds miserable to you. This is a rising tide industry, it's growing like gangbusters. What advice would you give anybody that's a business professional that's not in cannabis yet, thinking about getting into it and starting to go through the exploratory processes to to make that happen? What would, what would you tell someone that wants to get into the industry today? I would say, um, first and foremost, just like you would with any industry, like try to like experience it for yourself. Go to a dispensary, walk through the doors. I promise it's it's not as scary as you might think. Uh, and, and take it in as a consumer to understand for yourself, like what challenges and opportunities you see um, and whether or not you think that you could be a part of solutioning against that. Um, the second thing I'd say is, I have a lot of people ask me, um, like if I wait, will it be too late to get into the industry? Or is it too early and is this gonna hurt my reputation and my future? Like I get both sides. Um, my answer would be like one, I feel like I've, I've run a marathon and yet I, I also feel like I'm at the starting line. So this is still the infancy of this industry, even at a point where it's, you know, $20 billion, this is just the beginning. Four out of five can, people consuming cannabis are consuming it through illicit channels. Like it, this is just the start. So don't feel like you're too late. Um, there's a great quote that I caught of yours from Adweek saying something along the lines of, we don't need to convince people to believe in cannabis. We need to convince them to buy legally. Hmm. How do you foresee that that unfolding? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I mentioned four out of five people who consume cannabis are not consuming in uh, legal channels, which is an amazing opportunity for the legal channel. You have people actually doing a certain behavior. They're just not doing so through your own business. Um, you know, my perspective is the first thing is a price. Price um, is going to be the number one driver of people's interests. I think people would love to buy legally, would love the comfort and safety of buying tested product and, and buying in a legal form. But um, we have to, through scale and through efficiency, drive down the price of cannabis so that it's a reasonable alternative to how people purchase that today. And that's extra important when the level of tax on our products is as much as 40% in some states. So the burdens on the industry to really drive efficiency, drive down price for consumers. Um, and then I would say access. Um, it is very convenient for a lot of people in New York City to have someone arrive in 20 minutes on a bike and allow them to actually see and experience their product before they commit their dollars to it. Um, that is very different than walking down the street in a state where you don't have delivery to wait in line, to get to a counter, to pay for something you've never seen and pay tax. Like that is a different experience. Um, and so it's a reasonable, people are making rational decisions. Um, so it's on us to innovate the industry, to, to compete with as a formidable competitor. Corey, I can't thank you enough for carving out the time today. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Um, I've enjoyed the heck out of this conversation and look forward to watching the evolution of, of Cresco over the months and year to come. Me too. Thank you for having me. It was great talking yeah, to you. 100%. Have a good weekend.